Razor components make up the foundations of a Blazor application. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to create, initialize, and set parameters in a Razor component. Remember to hit the red subscribe button or go to youtube.com slash round the code to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Learn Blazor WebAssembly and other C Sharp frameworks with our .NET online courses. Go to roundthecode.com slash courses. When creating a Blazor WebAssembly app through Visual Studio using the default template, it creates a number of these different .razor files. These are Razor components, and the file name represents the ID of the Razor component. In addition, it creates this program.cs file, and what this does is it will initialize the Blazor WebAssembly application through the app Razor component. This will use the root data to render the page, it also sets a default layout, which is set to the main layout razor component. Within the main layout, there is a nav menu component that it's referencing. This represents all the links for the Blazor WebAssembly application. NavLink is one of the razor components built into Blazor WebAssembly. What this does, it will render a link to the application but what NavLink can do is it can set whether a link is active or not, depending on the page that you're on. We've also got this app body. This will render the contents depending on what page we're on. So for example, if we're on the home page, it will render the contents in the index.razor. It knows that because it's got the app page directive and that is set to forward slash. In addition, we've got another built-in Blazor WebAssembly component, and that is page title. As you can probably guess, that sets the page title of the page. We've then got some content here, and then we're referencing yet another Razor component called Survey Prompt. The Blazor application is running. You can see on the left-hand side, we've got all our links here, and because we're on the home page, we can see that it's rendering our content. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a Razor component. We want to render a page called News. So in order to do that, we're going to go into our Pages folder, click Add, and go to Razor Component. Just make sure that Razor Component is selected up there, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to name it News.Razor. Now we want to render this to slash News. So in order to do that, we call the at page directive, and we put the contents in there as slash News. We can now see that that is rendering for us. Now on the news page, we want to share the latest headlines. We want to also share the same component across multiple components. And sometimes we might want to change the title depending on what page we're on. So in order to do that, we're going to create a new Razor component. We're going to create a shared one. So once again, we go to add a Razor component and we're going to call it News Headlines. Now, as this Razor component is not going to be rendered to a page directly, what we're going to do is we don't need to use the app page directive for this because we'll reference it from the news page. Quite simply, to reference it, all we need to do is we need to call the ID of the Razor component, which is the file name before the dot .razor. So in this instance, it's news headlines. That Razor component has now been rendered to the news page. What we might want to do though, is we might want to render a title depending on what page we're referencing this news headlines. In order to do that, we've got this at code directive in here and we can go ahead and we can set a property. So we're gonna call it title. Now the key here is that we need to set the title within the Razor component reference. In order to do that, we can use the parameter attribute and assign it above the property. What we can do now is we can now set the title. You notice that it's now been highlighted in purple rather than in red, and we can call it My Latest Headlines. The last thing we need to do is we need to render this property to the Razor component. To do that, we just simply reference the title with an at at the beginning. If we wanted to render that same Razor component on the home page, we could go ahead and do the same thing. So we reference it as news headlines. 
And now we can change the title. So if we change it to My Global Headlines, it will represent a new title on the home page compared to the news page. We can see that that is represented here. As well as setting parameters in a shared razor component, they can be done in a razor component that is rendered to the page. And this can be done by using a query string. So what we want to do is we want to change the title here and we want to bring in the value based on a query string parameter. First thing we need to do is we need to set a property and we're going to call it title. Once again, we need to set the parameter attribute. In addition to that, we can set the supply parameter from query attribute. Within that, we can set a name property and we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to call it title. What this will do is it will look for the title query string and it will populate the title with that value. Last thing is we just need to render the title with the title property. So you'll notice at the moment that there's no title on there, but if we render a title query string and we call it my title, we can see that is rendering to the page. That's a basic overview of Razor components. To learn more about Razor components and Blazor WebAssembly in general, check out our online courses at roundthecode.com courses. Thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.